Awesome, man. All right, Cody, thanks for joining here me today, man. So what we're going to do here quick um, is just go over a few questions here. So for those who are tuning in and listening, um, just give us a little background, who you are, where you're from, and then what your, what your operation consists of. Yeah, man. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, my name's Cody Crawford. I'm 24 years old, and I'm located in um, Preston, Maryland, on the eastern shore. Um, we have a small grain operation, and we have a four-barn chicken operation, and I also have a small trucking operation that I'm looking to grow in the future. Yeah. And how old were you when you started that? I started, I started the grain operation when I was 17. And I started the, I should say, we bought the chicken operation with my parents when I was 20. And I started the trucking business when I was 23. Yeah. So super young, right? Yeah. You've been in this game for a long time now, right? You're what, 24 now? Correct. Yeah. So you built, you built something that you started back in from 16 and built it to something pretty, pretty big now. So you've been in the game here for a while, right? Yeah. hundred yeah, percent. Um, so what would you say wasn't working in life and business before you, you came into legacy farmer and which, which, which again, you came into legacy farmer. It's been, it's been pretty close on a year now, right? Was it last September? Yeah. Right about, right about there. Yep. Yeah. So a year. So what, what back then wasn't working for you, um, inside of life and business? Uh, I mean, I'll be honest, nothing was working. Um, you know, we, we were, we were getting by, you know, we were sustaining, but we weren't, we weren't really getting ahead. We didn't really have any clue on where we needed to go to really produce more for the business and the family. And, you know, just, it caused a lot of stress on relationships, you know, of most, me and my parents for one were button heads, you know, every day we couldn't have a casual conversation without button heads just because everybody was under a lot of stress. So, I mean, nothing, absolutely nothing was working. We were just going through the motions every single day. And, you know, I mean, like I said, we were getting by, but we weren't happy. We weren't really like thriving. We didn't really know how to thrive. And, um, but at the end of the day, the, at the end of the day, when you looked at yourself in the mirror, you just felt like you accomplished nothing at all. Yeah. You felt like each day it was almost as if you were stuck spinning your wheels and not, not really having any direction or any, any sort of direction on where to go or what could be possible. Exactly. It was kind of like the question that came to my mind probably every single day, multiple times there is like, what am I even doing this for? Like, what, what's the point? Yeah. And, and how, how many farmers and ranchers do you think here today? Like, and especially let's, let's target, like, so you're, you're 24. Okay. So, so the younger farmers like you that are starting their own businesses, like you have, right. What do you, what do you think specifically for, for them? Like is, is the hardest thing that they have to go through to start? Well, if they're anything like me, they, if they're anything like me, they love it and they're very ambitious about it. But the hardest thing to start, I mean, number one would probably be money because, you know, banks, banks seem to be tightening up and they see us young people as high risk, which I can understand. But um, money would be number one, just obtaining the funds to go operate. And two would probably be just obtaining the ground to, and, you know, whether you're a rancher or a farmer, ground's important because you need it. Um, obtaining that ground is extremely hard, especially in my area, because price, you know, the price for land rent alone is astronomical. I mean, we got guys paying $300 an acre for dry land, you know, dry land, sandy ground. And, but the third one that should probably be number one is just having the mental, the mental capability to understand what you're getting into and that it's not going to be a overnight adventure and you're not going to go from one acre to 10,000 acres in a year. It's going to take you a long time. It's going to take a lot of problem solving to get there. Mm -hmm. And, and how, so how many, how many kids or how many, how many farmers your age, okay, in your area are trying to do the same thing that Cody's doing that can relate to the things that Cody's trying to accomplish? Off the top of my head, I think we have, I think I know of four 
that are within like that 21 to 26 age range that are actually trying to build something mm -hmm. sustainable. So not very many, not very many people you can turn to, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah and, then, you know, there are some other ones that linger in there, but they're, you know, their fathers have built sizable operations and successful operations. And, you know, you can talk to them, but they don't have quite the same, they don't have quite the same thought process as you because they didn't have to start from the ground up. They kind of just got, they, well, essentially they got born into it and it's been there since day one. Yeah. 100% not understanding what actually goes on behind the scenes to make it work, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so so since since being in Legacy Farmer then, so what what has really changed here since you've joined here in this first year? What is the biggest thing that's changed for Cody? Uh, my, I guess my my mental process has been the number one shift. I mean, we've always worked hard, you know, we've always pushed our limits with you know how many hours we can work and things like that but my biggest flaw was being able to process things and being able to really think things through especially problems you know if a problem came up and a year ago if a problem came into me I thought it was the end of the world and now if a problem comes I'm, I think more of it as an opportunity but um the biggest thing that's changed is being able to really take a problem and break it down and figure out not only the lesson that comes from the problem, but the solution that's going to prevent that problem from coming back, you know, a year down the road. Would you, would you say your confidence in decision-making has increased? Yes, definitely. Definitely. Before, you know, we'd, before we'd back and we'd go back and forth, we could, we were indecisive. We didn't know what was what we know we, we wanted to do it, but we didn't, we didn't have the maturity of probably the right word, the maturity to understand that just because we want it doesn't mean it's the right choice. Yep. But I've definitely been able to take a decision and break it down to where even if it's a hard decision of saying, well, even though I really want to do this, I just, it's just not the right time or it's just not right for the direction I want to go. But um, that is definitely, it's definitely increased since being inside of Legacy Farmer. Yeah, hundred percent. And that's, that's something I, yeah, that you've definitely grown from. So with that, so with, with the stack that's helped you change those mindsets, you know, the core four, the tools, the training videos, you know, these hot seats, um, out of those things, what would you, what would you say is your favorite thing um, about Legacy Farmer or like the community, right? Having this group of farmers and ranchers together, what would you say, what would you say is your favorite thing about Legacy Farmer? Uh, it's all my favorite, but um, the stack would probably be my favorite. It'd be a close, community would be a close second because, you know, it is nice being able, you know, if there are anything like me, you're always thinking about what's next. Like, what can we do next? What can we do more? How can we diversify? And it's nice knowing you have a large group across the whole United States that you can reach out to and you know they're going to respond to you because they're in the same, you know, they're in the same boat as you, essentially. It's just different levels, but you're in the same boat. But the stack is by far my favorite because it has – time out. It has – made me force myself to challenge myself to where before if I just didn't think I could do it or we had an issue or you, you name it really we would just we just run with it where now we can actually challenge it and figure out is this just me lying to myself or is this an actual truth that we need to acknowledge yeah and that's like we discussed, that's really opened your eyes to the, the different possibilities that are, that are there. Those stories that aren't true when you challenge those, when you see the different, the different possibilities that are within there, it just opens up a new possibility and just, just a new path that you didn't know was possible, right? Yeah. The stack for you has been gold. Like we, I read your stacks on the back end when you complete your stacks, like for you, it just opens up a new part of Cody that he didn't know what was possible, right? So before before we had the stack and everything, we had this, you know, we were inside our little bubble 
and we just thought what was in our little what's our bubble would be my community or my my county you, know, you always thought you had to do everything inside of your county and you know you can't go outside of your county and now you know we have the mindset that we can go anywhere we want you know we can go as big as we want or we can just pick up and move operations to where it's going to be a better fit for what we want to do yep hundred percent. And that's going to give you the best future, right? For you and your family. Exactly. Yeah. hundred percent. All right. Last question here. So say if someone was kind of, they've been, so they've been listening to legacy farmer, right? They've been tuned in to the podcast, some videos on Facebook and, and they're sitting there wondering if they, if they should come into this network, if they'd be a good fit or if they're sitting on the fence what would be one thing you would, you would suggest or tell somebody about legacy farmer or one thing you would tell them that would, that you would maybe say that would help them come into the network. So if it's somebody that if, if they're listening to this and they have, and they're struggling or they're kind of in the same position that I'm in, even if you're on a higher level or even a lower level, um, obviously what you're doing isn't working Otherwise, you wouldn't even be contemplating making the decision. But you'll never, you'll never move forward if you don't take the step forward. Or you'll never, if you don't take that leap of faith, you'll never know. So you, would, you rather, would you rather take the leap of faith and you give it your all and it not be quite what you need? Or would you rather just sit in your office every night and wonder what if I did that or you know, what, what if I would have took that leap of faith, could we be in a much better mental position or financial position or just have a better relationship across all your relationships by simply taking that leap of faith. Do you, do you think the pain, long-term pain, it would be, it would be heavier from the pain of regret from not taking action or from the pain that happens through you taking that leap of faith, that step, that first, that first step, like you did, you know, that, that happens in that first process. Do you think, do you think the long-term pain is heavier or the short term, short term? The long-term pain is definitely heavier because me speaking for myself, when I did the phone interview with Jace and we went through the, we went through the logistics of what, we needed to do in order to get inside of legacy farmer, you know, the first, the first thought that came through my head was like, Oh boy, here we go. But then once I committed and we got everything straight and when I say everything straight within like 20 minutes, right after that, I was filled with excitement and confidence. Like the, the original story I was telling myself about like, you know, how's this going to go? Or how's this going to go over with, you know, with everything immediately got wiped out and it was more like you were confident you were excited you were ready to go so it's just kind of if you're sitting on the fence and you're scared to jump that that jump that you're going to take will probably be the most thrilling thing you've ever done in your life 100 100 and when you, when you do that, when you finally make that commitment to yourself, you open up that permission for you to go after the things that you want, right? And then, and then now, now is where you can start to put in the work and figure out what path you want to take, right? Once you've made that step, that leap, okay, you're here, right? Yep. That's when you can start to, start to make, make things happen. Yeah. Awesome. 